Okay, so hi guys. So we were just looking at some artwork and we started talking to each other. So you, you know. introduced yourself as Lawrence. Do you have a last name, Lawrence? Kuznets. Kuznets, okay. And Russian. it's Russian. It's Russian. Oh, that's awesome. And cool. uh, I'll show you something weird is that my, my PhD thesis on liquid cool garments. Uh -huh. And in fact, I have Buzz Aldrin's. I did it on, on Buzz Aldrin's liquid cool garments following Apollo 11. Oh, wow. It's about this thick. But I'm telling you the story because uh, years later, I found out when I worked in the Houston, the Johnson Space Center, that mm -hmm. after the wall came down in 1989 and we started talking to the Russians, there was a Russian engineer by the name of Kuznetsov who actually studied liquid cool garments. Oh, wow. And we kept on missing each other at meetings like this. And uh -huh. this guy. How could that possibly be? How could somebody have the same last yeah. name, study the same obscure thing in physics? You know? Yeah. And unfortunately, he passed away before I could talk to him. Oh, man. Weird, huh? Okay. So, Rebecca, so you were talking a little bit about, um, as far as garments go, specifically what kind of garments? Let's just break it down a little bit into uh, pretty easy terms. You mean what I do now? Yes. Uh, I'm designing uh, spacesuits for Mars, and there are oh, for Mars. Oh. They've got to be very different. Okay. Than any other, because Mars right. is a planet. It's yep. not space, and it's not the moon, where there's no air and there's no atmosphere and there's hardly any gravity. Mm -hmm. Mars is a planet. Yeah. You know, you wouldn't go. Yeah. You wouldn't go to uh, the Caribbean wearing a ski jacket, and you nope. wouldn't go nope. to uh, Antarctica wearing a bikini. And yeah, think precisely. about Mars, it's, kind of, it's more like that. Yeah. So you've got to have a suit that's suited, no pun intended, for the environment. Mm -hmm. So you've got lots of stuff there that you can use. You've got carbon dioxide atmosphere, you have mm -hmm. water vapor, you have cold temperatures and low humidity, and all that stuff you can use for a life support system mm -hmm. that instead of being closed, which is what the current suits are, can be open. And that's important because the current suits weigh about 400 pounds. Yeah, they're and, ooh, uh, they're heavy. Yeah. You can't walk around with such a suit on Mars with 38 percent gravity. Mm -hmm. So that's over 100, 140, 150 pounds on your back without yeah. your own body weight. No. Nope. You're dead in the water, so you need to have something completely different. Who are you developing uh, these new spacesuits for, uh, specifically to go to Mars? Is it partnering with NASA or is it private uh, companies that are developing the suits? Well, I have a company, a small company that I haven't ever used before called Space Spinoffs. Okay. Uh, and uh, we also kind of make space bras, sports bras, <laughs> space suit material, wow. headband cooling systems. But that's a whole yeah. other story. I won't get into that. Okay. And films and film stories and stuff wow. like that, treatments. But, but really, that's not the way to do something like this. You have to partner with somebody. Yeah. So I teach at UC Berkeley. Okay. And I have a class of 30 somewhat students. What do you teach? Space suits. Space from Mars. That's a class. class. That's a class at Berkeley? Class what? At Berkeley. Oh gosh, I'll have to go there. Okay. And um, so it's kind of like a design class and a science class, and it's merged together. It's merged together, but the, what's different about it is we partner with experts and other universities and other university teams and 300 students in Finland. And we basically. Uh, it's an evolutionary design where you start off to give everybody basic idea of what you want to do, mm -hmm. and then you, they have one semester to come up with a concept. And at the end of the semester, you pass that on to experts, mm -hmm. and you get feedback and critique it. And then you start the second semester with what you finished the first semester with, and the third semester ah. from the second. And, and so it's like it cranks away. Yeah. And you can do this when you know you've got 10 or 15 years before you go to Mars. So you start out yep. with something very, you know, low level, mm. and each year it gets more sophisticated and more high level. And then at some point you bring in new partners like mm. Paragon Space Exploration Systems or uh, engineer. I have a lot of friends at NASA. I worked there for a long time, so I have wow. friends who offer their help. Wow. Even though it's not official, yeah. uh, they can't sign a time card on it, yeah. they offer their help. And oh, so, that's amazing. So it's a, a grassroots. Yeah. It's the only way to do something like that is a grassroots program that exactly. kind of grows and evolves. And that's, that's the idea. And really like getting to know people and networking. That's so this, amazing. Uh, yeah. Just this past semester I had four graduate students and they were doing their masters on this project. So they had to pick a piece of it and they picked a glove. Um, and what's interesting about that is they, they made a, 
a you know significant breakthrough because the gloves are the biggest problems in space suits yes. today. Yeah. Half the injuries are fingernail damage, mm. loss of fingernails. And uh, so there have been a lot of designs proposed for gloves, but they haven't really addressed what the fundamental issue is, which mm. is in a glove you have very little room for ventilation. Mm. Try imagine putting on a pair of rubber gloves in a kitchen and working, and yeah. in about 30 seconds your hand is covered with sweat. Yeah. So a glove is sort of like that. It's rubber to provide the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. There's very little room to circulate air. So very quick, you begin to sweat along your fingertips. Yeah. Right. So, so now imagine you've got a, a glove that's wet by the fingertips. And it's preformed because these gloves are preformed, mm -hmm. and now you're doing a task that requires a lot of dexterity. Yeah. So you grab something, but then you go when you go to return from this position to this position, mm -hmm. your fingernails and fingertips are rubbing against the fabric, which is soaking wet. Oh. And you repeat this and repeat this, and that's what causes the fingernail damage. Oh man. So you need a real couple of breakthroughs. The first thing is you have to get the sweat out of there. Yeah. And the second thing is you. One thing you could do is drop the pressure in the glove relative mm -hmm. to the rest of the suit temporarily. Yeah. So that it's easier, you don't have to fight the pressure as much to do a task. Mm -hmm. And the third thing, which was, these kids did all of this stuff for their degree requirement, is they had, uh, <laughs> yeah. they had three tendons. They had robotic assist fingers that went over the outside of the glove, uh -huh. with tendons and a sensing system in the wrist that it, it would sense when the task was becoming too difficult. Wow. And then it would feed back to these tendons that would help pull the fingers down and up. Wow. So, you know, it was only the first semester we did it, a super challenging task. Yeah, it sounds challenging. Have you ever heard of Final Frontier Designs? They're one of the partners we have, and they're in Brooklyn. Oh, okay, yeah. I met them. Yeah, yeah so I... Nikolai, and you met Ted Nikolai Southern. Nikolai, and yeah, Ted yeah. Southern, yeah. So I yeah. worked with them um, a bit, actually. They had me try on one of their spacesuits, which was really cool. Of course cool. they did. Yeah, it was, <laughs> it, the did. way it happened, too, is I was actually out in um, Washington, D.C., and um, I had added them on Facebook because I was trying to pitch to Congress why we should be increasing funding in NASA and in space exploration, and I was meeting with the Congresswoman of Brooklyn, and I found out about that company, added them on Facebook, and then they reached out, and but yeah, they won the NASA Centennial Challenge for right, their, their right. space club technology. You know, we just sort of found this out from flight surgeons this past year. Oh wow, so, so it's, it's very it's, recent. It's not a... Fingernail damage is well known and, and mm -hmm. the way people have traditionally tried to mitigate it is by making gloves that are easier to move. Yeah. But they didn't know the reason was because you're mm -hmm. fighting water and sweat and fabric and turning your wow. finger back to normal. So. Just getting the sweat out, yeah. that's a tough job that requires yeah. special. Yeah, know. like maybe like a temperature control type of glove or like some weird material or... Yeah, the weird yeah. material is actually called a dense monolithic membrane, so we know a little bit about that. And it, it holds pressure and allows water vapor to pass through. Uh, say it again, what is it called? DMM, a dense monolithic membrane. Wow, okay, DMM, I'll remember that. Awesome, well thank you, Lawrence. You're this welcome. was great to talk to you. Was really, I'm glad we started talking to each other just here in the the art exhibit that's happening. <laughs> awesome, <everywhere> cool. <laughs> yeah, so is there anywhere that, you know, people maybe would be able to read about your research or what you're working on, a website? Uh, yeah, 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 Space, uh, da, uh, Space News did a piece about four months ago. Okay. Uh, and it was written by Leonard David, who's one of the primary authors. And Amazing. It's called Blue Collar Mars Spacesuit, UC Berkeley. If you, if you Amazing, type in, yep. I will add that in the UC link Berkeley. below. Awesome. Find it. Cool. Uh, also, you can go to Twitter. Twitter. And What's you, your Twitter handle? Uh, well, the, the class's Twitter handle is ME292A. ME292A. Like mechanical Engineering 292A. And the last entry is the final presentation that the students gave. It's about an hour. Exciting hour and a half long. Amazing. Or cool. you could go to my YouTube site. What's your YouTube? Yeah. I uh, you know you have a YouTube channel? <laughs> I have a YouTube channel. Awesome. You go to N2 Mars. N2 Mars. The letter N. Thank you so much, You're Lawrence. Welcome. I will see you around. Okay, good. Bye. Bye.